Hey everyone, this is David Pike, the Motor City Mechanic. And today we've got a Dodge Nitro in the shop with an ABS light on. And I'm going to show you step by step what you need to do. We're going to find out what the code is. We've got some items we can check. We're going to actually do some lab scope readings. And we're going to show you some befores and afters and compare it to some good readings as well. So with that, you go ahead and start getting comfortable while I get everything set up for you. All right, so we pulled up the codes. We've got four of them in total. All seem to be related to the left rear speed sensor. And here we're pulling up the data. I've got the rear axles turning right now and the only one picking up is the right rear. The left rear is showing zero miles per hour. As you can see, the right rear is showing the speed, but the left rear is not. The front are not because the wheels are not spinning currently while on the lift, only the rear axle is. Now here's actually the live data reading uh, from the oscilloscope on the left rear. Left rear, as you can see, has no movement whatsoever. Now we're on to the showing you a good one, which is the right rear. The right rear, as I get ready to accelerate, you'll start seeing it go ahead and raise up. Right now it's at a steady zero and it works its way up. There you go. I'm applying throttle, back tire spinning more and more and more, and I'm letting off. That's what a good sensor is. Right, so this is the left rear of the vehicle. Uh, there's your brake caliper so you can get an idea of where the sensor is. The sensor's right behind it. It has an electrical connector going to it. It's got a two-stage lock. The red piece right here you need to slide back and then you can squeeze on the connector to remove it. All right, there we go. Like I said, red piece slides back, and then you squeeze in right about here where my thumb is, to release the other lock. Now, they may get dirt up in here, you may have to clean up some brake clean, blow it out, whatever you need to do to get everything cleaned up, because once the dirt gets packed in there, that connector don't want to release too much because you can't squeeze on the locks. Now here's your sensor. The sensor is by itself, it does not have the wiring made to it like some of them, and we've got a 10 millimeter holding in place. I'm just using a 10 millimeter on a quarter inch ratchet. Get it all the way out. Get the rest of the way by hand. Alright. Now this sensor is pretty long. It's longer than you would think. There we go. That's it right there. Some of them have O-rings on them to kind of keep them in place. Some of them are a little tight coming out. Uh, once you get the bolt loose, what you can do is you can kind of wiggle it a little bit, rotate it side to side as you're trying to pull it and break it loose and get it out. Because this one's kind of a wedge design, it just fits down there and the further you go in, the little bit tighter it gets. So we'll get our new one, make sure everything's clean, slide it up in there, put the 10 millimeter bolt in place, put the connector on, and then we will recheck the sensor reading to see if that one's starting to pick up again. All right, at this point, we've got the sensor replaced. Now we're going to pull our data back up in the ABS module, go to data, and I've got it running in the air, and I don't have a lot of speed on it, so right now the right rear is not reading. Uh, we'll go ahead and look at the left rear that we just replaced. So as I get ready to give it a little bit of throttle, I've got it in gear, off the ground. The rear axle is going to start spinning more, and there you go. Left rear is starting to read. Of course, like I said, the right rear would have picked up now if I was showing you that. But that's where we are now. We've got a left rear that's now reading correctly. So there we go. Now all of a sudden the right rear is showing up on the data right below the left rear because I got some speed. So both the rears are working. And like I said, the front's not because the front's not spinning. All right, so now you got to see how the ABS system worked on a Dodge Nitro as far as the speed sensor. As you saw, it's nothing hard to replace. And also, in order to check it accurately, you kind of need a high-end scanner or something that can actually give you some lab scope readings. And that's the proper way to check it. Now, you could have probably thrown a sensor at it and been fine. In some cases, though, that's when it bites you in the rear and you find out it wasn't that. Nonetheless, we showed you what you need to know. We showed you good. We showed you bad. And we showed you how to remove it. So at this point, this is where I need your help. I need you to give any thumbs up, thumbs down. That's your way of grading my performance as far as these videos. Ask any questions you feel on a Dodge Jeep, Chrysler, or Ram, or any suggestions for any videos you might want. I make a little list of them from time to time, and if I've got access to one, I try to make a video. In the meantime, you can check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Scroll down to the links at the bottom of the video. You'll see a link to both of them in the descriptions. 
and don't forget to subscribe that way you get notified of videos such as this or anything else that I feel is important in the meantime thanks again for watching I've got more videos to work on